Hello, this is Gabriel Wilson with abugames.com doing a cube draft, holiday cube, and this opening pack, not too exciting. Um, you know, I really have to take a direction on this one, I feel like. I can, uh, I could take Geddon and try to draft a beatdown strategy, which is not my strongest, uh, way to go, I don't think. Um, the other picks, Bloodbraid Elf is also really good in, in a lot of, uh, in any strategy really, if you're going to play. If you can get the, just get the colors, I guess. Uh, Shackles is good. I think Underground Sea is the most versatile pick here. So I'm just going to go with Underground Sea and hope things turn out better. Okay, we've got... Not too many good, great cards. I guess Tooth and Nail is potentially the most... Uh, you know, maybe I'll take this Tooth and Nail. I haven't uh, haven't had a Tooth and Nail deck in a while. Um, it is a lot. Nice. It's uh, nine mana to entwine it. But the other option, sort of body in mind. Um, if I had taken Geddon, probably would take sort of body in mind and just trying to play like a some kind of beat down strategy um, but I don't know or route routes really good too I really like the I really like route since it's an instant maybe I'll just take route nah you know what I think I'm gonna go with tooth and nail and uh, see what uh, see what I can do see if I can't get some fatties Terastodon, well, that's one of the best. One of the best things to tooth and nail for. Well, I don't know. I guess, yeah, it's pretty dang good. I'm thinking, like, Eldrazi is probably better, but... Um, I could take that, I guess. Uh, what else is in here? Him. There's also Azorius. There's Signets, which are pretty dang imp important. And Terastodon is, is a great uh, fatty to tooth and nail into, but... I can get something else. I think it's more important to grab the signets. And I think blue signets is more important. Um, I don't know, actually, between Rakdos and Azur Signet, which one's better, but I'm going to go with Azur Signet. Okay, well. I think it's a pretty easy uh, Consecrated Sphinx here. I do love me a uh, Nickel Bolas. Uh, super awesome. Plateau. Hopefully that comes back, but the chances of that's pretty low. But I think you just take Consecrated Sphinx. Not too bad of a tooth and nail target either. So, alright, now I just need to get fast mana and get Consecrated Sphinx out. Alright, so now we've got Buried Alive. That's a interesting... Man, it sucks, because I would like to take Buried Alive and Sheldred, you know, and just good stuff. But you really just got to take the... I feel like you just must take Signets early. If you don't have Signets in your deck, it's just... You're so slow. People just get... You just have... You just got to take them, I feel like. So, just take those, and... Yep, there's another one, Celestia Signet. All right, well, now I'm getting the Signets out of the way, so maybe I can start taking some some really good cards soon hmm there's not I mean what we got Liliana parallax waves okay primal commands okay but uh, I think I think I'm just gonna take chancery here yep definitely okay I feel like I'm pretty well set up now for um, look at that I'm pretty set up for Esper and maybe I don't play Tooth and Nail, we'll see. Alright, so this pack, nothing too important. I don't really like Daxus that much. He's pretty pretty vulnerable, just not that great. So Woodfell Primus is a pretty good one for Tooth and Nail. Um, there's also Call the Herd. I like that guy a lot, just to stabilize the ground. But Woodfell Primus is pretty awesome and goes along with Tooth and Nail okay. So we'll just take that. Not doesn't really okay. Well, Bloodbraid Elf. Uh, there's Simic Sky Swallower, which is good fatty, but Bloodbraid Elf is 
I'm pretty glad to get the happy to get this back. Cascading into a signet or whatever. So good. Does make counter spells worse, but Okay, Bonfire. I like that. I think I like Bonfire the Dam better than any of this stuff. This guy's fine. Um, Hermit, Rude Awakening. All right. I, d I just want some removal. It looks like I'm going to be playing like a probably just a big ramp, fat, fatty control deck, which is great. I like that style. And Bonfire is great in that. So you can just Wind Fire off the top or One Side Wrath or. You know, you're going to be playing tons of mana, so you can usually just hard cast it and be okay. Terastodon came back. I think I like that better than Exalted Angel. All right, sweet. Now I've got, wow, do I have a big fatty green deck going here. Look at these boom booms. And Blood Bray, yeah. So it's funny, my, uh, uh, it's unfortunate that all my fixing is different than what the cards I have, but doesn't mean I can't, uh, I think I can still make it work. Just gotta, I'll get some more. That plateau would have been really good. Although I don't have any white cards, but that will probably change, I suspect. Okay, so, yep, I think I'm just going to take Nickel Bolas. Oracle of Moldiah is a consideration, but uh, this guy, it's so easy to ramp in this format, so... Eight man is way easy to get to, and he's one of the best guys possible. So a lot. I mean, your whole strategy could be just ramp this guy out and win. So now I've just got a lot, a lot of good cards. So all I've got to do is just draft a bunch of mana ramp stuff, and just a, maybe three or four more really good cards, and just and then I'll be set with like filler stuff. So. I, I like the way this is going a lot. Okay, well, um, I think I'm just going to take Buried Alive. It's got bigger upside than Force Spike. Not the biggest fan of that type stuff. So I guess I'll just kill someone's Fire Drinker Seder. Not going to play either of this stuff, so. Alright. Let's see, maybe this, uh, maybe this... Buried Alive will work. I've got some good fatties to reanimate. So, oh, Ancestral Recall. Hello. It's funny. I have this, like, fix to give me the original art, but uh, for whatever reason, Ancestral Recall doesn't, uh, didn't get the new art. Yeah, it's uh, pretty obvious. I, uh, there's actually an argument to say that Upheaval is just, just more powerful in this thing than Ancestral Recall. Um, that might be blasphemy, but... I mean, draw three is great. Uh, near the, I mean, probably within the top three cards. Probably maybe time walk. Well, better than time walk. Better than lotus. I don't know. Maybe number one card. Hard <laughs> soul ring probably better. Maybe top three cards. Upheavals though, it's just as nuts. I mean, you just win the game half the time you cast it, if not more. Just so. I really, and now I have to worry about upheaval the whole draft. I can just, it's like one of those cards, if you don't have counterspell for it, you just lose on the spot. So, well, I didn't talk myself out of Ancestral somehow. <laughs> Thank goodness. That would have been really, really bad. All right. Um, there's Cryptic, but I, well, I'm not going to feel like, I don't feel con like I'll be able to consistently get the green, the blue mana for it. So I'm going to pass that, pass on that. Um, I suppose Stomping Ground is just the card to take here. I've got uh, lots of green cards and a couple red cards and so on and so forth. So I guess there is an argument to be made for Gruel Turf. I do have one Bounce Land already. I don't like to have probably more than two, maybe three at the most, but probably just two tops. So it's so it's still pretty dang early in the draft. So I can I mean, eh, this will get passed back anyways. That or or Pluson Forest, so get a bill. Have a, oh, wait. Oh, wow. Channel. Yeah. Okay. This is, uh, this is great. <sighs> channel allows you to do some really dumb things. Even, uh, channeling, uh, Tooth and Nail. Uh, you just need to get, I guess I need to get four green for that. That'd be pretty rough. But I could easily see myself channeling Consecrated Sphinx or, 
channel out huge bonfire of the dam. That'd be pretty funny. All right, channel. No, no, no joke. All right. I think. I think I'm gonna take Liliana. It's one really good, really good. Yes, it is. Although I would like to have some of the, one of these sack lands, I guess. Looks like, yeah, I do have Underground Sea, Orzhov Signet. Maybe I should. Do, nah, I'm taking Lily on the Veil. That's just too crazy good. Whoa, some stuff in this pack. We've got. Wheel. <laughs> Wheel. I think. It's either Savannah or Steam Vents. Um, since I don't have any white, maybe I just try to play. It's, sometimes it's nice to just go four colors instead of five, which is uh, kind of funny. But uh, I have blue and I have red. Pretty confident I'll be playing both those colors, so I think I'll just take Steam Vents. I mean, no question if I had uh, if this was Volcanic Island. I think the only question is because it's a I kind of want to take Savannah because it doesn't do any damage to me but usually meh, quite often the damage is irrelevant not always though alright this is a pretty easy Ralzeric for me this guy is super awesome in the uh, so much better so much better in this power cube used to be in the old cube I would just t totally thought this guy sucked and I don't, I don't know, it just never seemed to work for me, but I've been playing him recently, and he's gotten so much better. Being able, I guess probably because you can untap these dual lands, uh, or I always have artifact mana, sometimes, that, a lot of times, add more than, more than one. So he's a mana ramp guy, as well as uh, just, like, you can ultimate him, basically. You want to build up to ultimate on this guy, whereas before it just wasn't impactful enough. All right, taking Ral Zarek. And all right, breeding pool. Oof. Wait, there's a Boris signet. Hmm. I do have three signets already, and this is red and white, which I'm thinking about cutting white anyways. So I probably can pick up another signet or two. Um. So I'm gonna take breeding pool. That might be a mistake. You just kind of just want to always take signets. I already have two white signets. That's, oh, you know, three. All three white ones. That's uh, rough. This one would be white too. Yeah, I'm just going to take breeding pool. Yeah, too bad that, man, I wish these were real dual. I mean, I guess they are real. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess I should just be happy about getting dual lands. Okay. Smokestack, I don't think so. Vigilante is not really that spectacular. I could take the Weathered Wayfarer, but if I can avoid white, I think maybe I will try. There's Greater Gargadon, which, I don't know. Not, I'm not the biggest fan of this guy. It never seems to work out that great for me. So, I'm going to take Firestorm for the sideboard. Not the worst thing in the world. Moat. That might be a good enough reason to play. White, maybe not. Let's see, Court of Calling. Too much mana, probably. There's a Smash to Smithereens. Well, I do have... This is a tough one, in a way. I'd take the Moat. I don't think I'm going to play it. But I do, like I said, have three white Signets. It might work out. All right. Ooh, Firebolt or a dual. I think I just definitely need a a dual land here. And do I want Gruel Turf or do I want Carplusen Forest? I don't really like Carplusen Forest. I think I'm going to take Gruel Turf, especially as I have Ral Zarek. Okay. Catastrophe, Llanowar Waste. I think I'm going to take Llanowar Waste. I don't think I want Boris Garrison. Um, that's a third bounce land, and I've already got two, so two's probably good. I do like Catastrophe a ton, but again, trying to potentially not play white, so. 
Kitchen Finks, Mortars, or Thunder Maw Hellkite? Well, part of me thinks I should take the Mortars, but I don't think I can get away from taking this Thunder Maw. Nope, I couldn't do it. Ooh, I could take Seething Song, play a turn, that eh, turn three or turn two Seething Song, or Thunder Maw, sorry. Yeah, turn two, yeah, anyway, I'm going to take it to Encampment. That's, I think, better. Huh. Do I kill Price of Progress? I guess so. I don't want to get priced out. Ape. Get that ape out of here. Get that out of here. Alright, alright, well. I'm doing stuff, I think. Oh, no piece of no pieces of power. Um, Sphinx's Revelation is a fine card to grab with, uh, to play... I'll have plenty of white, so I'll be able. To I could play this no problem, or I could just fix my mana some more. I think that's probably more important. This gets me just about everything. I think it does. I have stomping ground, breeding pool, steam vents, underground sea. Um, is there any chance that it would come back? I could take. I could take Sphinx Revelation. You know what? Actually. Maybe I'll take Sphinx's Revelation because I do have channel. And so I could channel Sphinx's Revelations and draw like a ton of cards with that. Is that even, is that reasonable or is that a joke? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, I talk myself into Sphinx of Revelation. Hopefully I can get another sack land that'll that'll do something for me. All is dust. Garrick. I really like Garrick. He's pretty good. Ooh, Mirari's Wake. Wow. Hmm. This is a sack land. It's a black one and a white one, which is one of the worst ones for me, actually. So I think I can justify getting out of that. I don't think I can justify getting passing this Mirari's Wake, though. That would make things really easy, <laughs> mana-wise. So, I think I'd... W so the question is, rather have a Garrick or a Mirari's Wake out? Like, if I was to ramp out one of the two, what's actually more dangerous to the opponent? I think Mirari's Wake. That could be wrong, though. So, we'll try that. I'm pretty happy to have Mirari's Wake, I think. Let's see. Garrick Wildspeaker. Pretty awesome with Mirari's Wake. Uh, restock is okay. Elspeth's not too great. I think I'm going to take Demir Signet here. Um, that'll get me really good on... Yeah, that's more important than the Garrick. I have so many good cards. I just need to get some mana fixing, so... Man, this sucks, though. I didn't get... Oh, my gosh. Library of Alexandria? Well, that's awesome. I love this card. <laughs> Who doesn't, right? It's really good with fast mana. You can just not get... You just pull back ahead, and you're just playing two cards a turn. Uh, love me a Tezzeret, but I don't even have that many artifacts yet. And then a Johnny Vengeance is really awesome, too. But, yeah, this is... I think that's a pretty simple pick. Pretty simple. All right, so Koth, I have Steam Vents and Stomping Ground, probably not enough, definitely not enough, actually. Uh, Pentad Prism, or Thrag Tusk. Um, yeah, I'm not the, I don't think this is a, a Pentad Prism deck. I mean, ramping out guys is probably worth it. Especially if it was like Consecrated Sphinx. Um, I really like Thrag Tusk though. Let's just do that. That just can save your life. He's so freaking good. Okay. So we've got Johnny, Thoughtseize. A Johnny's no good for me. Etched Oracle would be good for me, but I've heard it's glitched and it has. It has glitched on me as well, so I, I, I know I'm less inclined to take that. I think Mind Stone is just where I want to be. I think that's pretty pretty easy. Uh, also, Ancient Grudge would be good, but... 
Nope, another mana ramp thing. Ooh, Ulamog. That's really that's uh that's pretty good. I think that's what I'm gonna do. That's a great thing for I've got the channel, I've got the tooth and nail, um Mirari's Wake. Yeah, there's no question I think on this what's the right thing for me to do. And that's Ulamog. Perfect. Um, yeah, that's a probably super awesome that I got that. Okay, I could take the Aetherling. That is really good, but I think I actually need something like Oblivion Ring. That my deck just doesn't have enough removal right now. So I did take the Sphinx's Revelation. Um, I do have Chancery, uh, three Signets. I think I can play the fit. I'm I'm definitely playing White for Mirari's Wake, so. Yeah, I'm going to take Oblivion Ring here, just an answer to stuff. Okay, and this is pretty awful. I could take the Tin Street. I think that's the best card. There is Zealous Conscripts would be good against me with all my Planeswalkers and, different, and against uh, Ulamog, but I think having a Tin Street Hooligan would be pretty good for the sideboard. So let's do that. And... All is dust. Sounds pretty good. Now, just a good, just a sweeper. Uh, I could take snap. Yeah, I'm gonna take all is dust. I don't know if I'm gonna play it. Ooh, lightning bolt or Elspeth Tyrell. I think I'm gonna take lightning bolt. I want some removal. That's a good one too. One of the best. Elspeth is great, is fine. Uh, it's a double white though, yeah, I want to avoid that, like the plague. Alright, well, Johnny Vengeant. Uh, I ended up playing more white than I expected. And go with, let's see, what's, eh, I could take the Lumberjack. I guess that's the most potential card to play with, an etched oracle. I'm definitely not playing the Ajani. So. All right, wow, that's awesome. That was a really good ditch. Holy cow. Temple Garden, last pick. Nice. All right, well, I'm happy enough with this deck. Um, let's see if I can make it work. Okay, I guess I'll just show you when I'm done. All right, this is what I ended up with. Um... Basically, I had to cut black because the two black cards were double black and just my mana wasn't good enough. So um, just playing the four colors and better submit before I ran out of time here.